girl, oh my god, this episode was better than the damn episode of Yana. I was oh. <laughs>favorite auntie mo and we are back for another episode review of marriage boot camp y'all this is season 14 episode eight scarred past um i said past scarred past i'm tired y'all look here um church announcements if you have not done so just yet go ahead and subscribe to my channel make sure you let me know that you stopped by with a thumbs up and then make sure you notification know turned on y'all if y'all join me in my live on what's today sunday uh friday night it was lit. We have fun at Club Quarantine, and we'll be doing it again this Friday at 9.10. Me and baby sis, we have fun, y'all. Club Quarantine. We turned up. It's BYOB. No drama. You got to come. Ready to dance. Ready to cut loose. All of that. We had a goddamn ball. So, thank you to everybody that joined me on my live on Friday night. Y'all, this episode was good. Oh, it was good. Had a bitch looking inside her own life and the shit that you do now, that's a reflection of some shit that happened in your childhood and why you do and you act the way that you act. I was like, damn, Dr. Ish. Had a bitch doing some reflecting. Oh, Lord. But look, I don't want to make this review long because I'm tired. I got to go to work in the morning. Hold on, I'm tired. Um, I got, I'm, I'm on some ranch and shit tonight, y'all. <laughs> My husband went to, uh, what's that called? Paradise on Ice. And so I've been sipping on some uh, love in a cup. Shit. Who is good. So hopefully y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's go ahead and get right up into it. So it's morning time. Y'all know how all the couples be in their little room chopping it up or whatever. Misha Lane and Stu, they in their room and they laying on the bed talking. And y'all, let me just say, Stu... I gotta eat my words, too. Cause I thought for I was, you know, I just thought you was just this nigga that just play around, clown around all the goddamn time. You and me, Shelly, wasn't no real relationship. I still don't think y'all belong together after this episode. And I'm explaining to you why just hold on. But Stu, oh my nigga. Your auntie was like right here, and you had me like right here a couple times. I was like, damn. That's why the nigga cover up and he's so goofy the way that he is. He's doing it to cover up his pain. The nigga done been through some shit still. My nigga, you done been through some shit. But he's starting to realize that um, more of where Michelle is coming from and the different insecurities that she has. And, you know, Stu is not a bad guy at all. You know, like I said, he clowns and he jokes and all that because he's covering up a lot of pain. That he done been through. You know what I'm saying? But he's starting to realize that maybe some, some of the things that he's done could be, you know, a contributing factor to why she feels the way that she feels. Not saying that he's done anything bad, but like he said, you know, he was like pressed hard to like mess with her. And she was like, you know, telling him to slow down and back off and this, that, and the other. Because y'all know this, this bitch been with Shug and she done been with Drake. And they both done bit upside her damn head. And so she's used to a different caliber of nigga. Even though Stu ain't gonna go upside her damn head, he still got other tendencies that's like niggas that she done been with in the past. And so that's kind of, you know, he's starting to realize a lot more of her insecurities and where her insecurities are coming from, why she's having these issues, right? Y'all, they was hugging. Stu was crying. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it's just something when you see a real nigga cry, real men cry. They just do. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh my God. And then Jocelyn is still upset over this whole situation with Stevie J. Oh, rat face ass. Stevie J. Oh, he got on my goddamn nerves. Y'all know she still going through the little custody shit with Bonnie Bella. You know, this that just started on the last episode. So she's all upset and she's crying about that. And I feel so bad for Jocelyn because she's just broken. She's broken. This nigga Stevie J done broke her down to her last. And and all she can think about is Bunny Bella. I was like, oh, Bunny Bella. 
Um, the ladies are outside talking. Dr. Ish ends up coming and getting me chalet because he wants to talk more about her. Now, he said that he's been observing me, um, observing me chalet. And so he's realizing that she still has not let go of her past. Like a lot of what she's been through contributes to what's going on in her relationship right now. And basically, he's wanting to talk to her about learning to let go of the past that it's okay to be loved. It's okay to let somebody in that's trying to love you. Like this damn Dr. Ish, I was like, y'all, this whole damn episode had me reflecting on shit in my life. Like, me and my husband like to sit and watch this anyway because we go through our own little marriage boot camp and shit when we watching this. And he hasn't watched this episode. I'm going to make this nigga sit down and watch this episode. We're going to go through this shit again. We're going to have some fucking counseling. But, uh, Dr. Ash, I need you to come in and <laughs> work on a bitch like my life. I mean, goddamn. So Dr. Ish and Judge Toller ends up talking with the group, telling them the next exercise that they're going to do is like this drawing. They're basically going to dig up stuff from their past and they're going to deal with it head on, right? So Dr. Ish has um, one part of the um, couples and Judge Toller has the other part of the couples. What they do, they have this exercise to draw, I think it was either two painful and one good memory or either two good memories and one bad memory but each one of them had to do that they had to draw the picture and after they drew the picture they had to like tattoo it on this um i don't know if it's like parchment paper or whatever it was they had to tattoo it on this paper that later on was going to be a tattoo or whatever right now this is when it gets deep this is when i like this kind of shit or whatever right so um what was it yeah it was good and bad memories right okay so Ajua and Jocelyn both, they both suffered sexual abuse. I think Ajua, it was either from a male, it was from a male, I don't know if it was from a, fin, a friend of the family or if it was somebody that was in the family, but Jocelyn, you know, suffered abuse from different men. She said a family member of hers basically taught her how to hold, how to be a whole 304 out here, was beating her and taking her money, all this other goddamn shit. CeeLo was spit on by a white friend of his when he was a little boy. He said that they were playing basketball and it was him and, him and a couple other friends from the neighborhood and one of his friends felt the need to spit on him right in his chest. And he said that woke something up in him probably on some old black man militant shit like, look here motherfucker, hold on, you're not gonna disrespect a real nigga like me. But it was some other shit that was going on with CeeLo that I felt they kind of left out. I don't know if it was just me, but what he was saying and some of the responses that he would have, it it didn't really line up to me. Like, I wanted to know more. Like, what was it that you felt like, you know, was woke up in you? And then he kept saying something about being weird and this and the other. And, you know, CeeLo. CeeLo's out there. He's, he's very definitely, you know, fucking different. But I felt like it was something that was being left out. I don't know. Y'all drop it down below and, and let me know what y'all think about that. But um, Styles P suffered abuse from his dad. He said his dad beat him with an extension cord. Them old school backwoods goddamn beatings. These goddamn parents back in the days, they didn't give a shit. They'll beat you till you die, wake your ass up and, and kill you with an extension cord again and wake your ass up and see that and wash them damn dishes. That's how our mom and daddies was. They don't give a fuck. Michelle Lay suffered um, with an abusive stepdad. Her dad abused her mom and he abused her sometimes as well. That's where her whole image of how a man is supposed to be started from. I don't know if it was her dad or her stepdad. I feel like she said it was her stepdad. But she was seeing him abuse her mom. He abused her. She dealt with abuse from Dre. She dealt with abuse from Suge. She dealt with abuse from all these men. So in her mind, if a man knocks the hell out of you, that's his way of showing you that he loves you. That's a messed up mentality to have. But it makes sense, though. It makes so much sense why she thinks and she feels the way that she does and why she says some of the shit that she says, though. Um, Stu. Now, ooh, Stu. Oh, my God, Stu. First of all, Shawnee said that she lost her baby sister. Her baby sister was seven weeks. After she lost her baby sister, her mother probably, I mean, her mother pretty much wasn't present after that. She was probably dealing with a lot of, um depression losing a baby at seven weeks no telling what happened but she was just dealing with a lot and so you know she said her and her mom are close now but her mother was absent pretty much after her you know losing her little sister now Stu 
Stu said that his father was a drug addict. He shared a dirty needle with somebody else and it ended up contracting AIDS. Later on, he died from complications of AIDS. What happened was um, he had missed a few treatments. They had sent somebody to the house to look for his dad. Come to find out his dad had been gone for nine days before somebody had actually found him. So he never really got the opportunity to tell him bye or anything like that, you know? And so... Stu has just dealt with a lot. When he was telling his story, he tried to put like this little funny twist on it, but Dr. Ish was like, look here, Stu, you don't have to make everything a joke. It's okay to feel what you feel. And you know what? Again, how you, this shit, how you reflecting back, that shit had me reflecting back on me because it's a lot of times that I made, and I had to realize that like watching this, I was like, that makes sense. Like, um, it's okay to, to feel what you're feeling sometimes. You don't have to crack jokes about everything. If you're feeling something uncomfortable, if you're feeling angry, or if you feeling sad or whatever, you don't necessarily have to crack a joke or, or have a defense or whatever. It's okay to feel certain things that you feel. But that was like a whole epiphany for your auntie. I was like, oh, okay. Chosen's had dreams of going um, to play football, but he messed up his knee or yeah, he messed up his knee from there. And so that messed with him mentally after that. I don't think that boy ever recovered from that. Like you tell, he he fell out crying from that. I'm like, oh Lord, ballistic with his boring ass. Said he found his grandmama, uh, his grandmother had passed away. And um, no, his grandmother had had a stroke. He had found his grandmother shortly after that. She ended up passing away. He said his grandmother was like his mother and his father. And so she played a big part in his life. After losing her, he went off to sell drugs, got in gangs and all this other bullshit. And he broke down when he was talking about his grandma. I was like, oh, that's my grandma's chain. My grandma gave me that chain. Who's just something else? Bianca was saying how she has been on her own, taking care of herself since she was 15. So she was chicken noodle soup with a soda on the side. Let it rain and clear it out. That's my shit. Let it rain and clear it out. That's my goddamn shit. But she said she's been on her own. She's been taking care of herself since she was goddamn 15. And quite honestly, I think that probably started a fucking growth. That's why she act like a damn child because she ain't never had to answer to no damn body. She done had her own money doing her own damn thing. Making a chicken noodle soup with a soda on the side since she was 15. She don't need nobody for no goddamn nothing. That's why she act like a goddamn brat that she does now. She feel like don't nobody love her. Because she said she felt like she didn't get enough love and enough attention. And she's been on her own. And so, bitch, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, that makes a lot of sense. Why Bianca is the way that she is. She's a goddamn child. She done grow that shit. Afterwards, everybody's sitting back. They chopping it up, talking about this whole little exercise, how they, uh, what they just did and how draining it was, right? Now, Bianca and Charles are talking. Now, I can understand both their point of views. Now... Bianca doesn't feel like Chosen makes her feel assured in their relationship. Like, it's just going to be me and you. You going to be with me. I ain't got nothing to worry about. Like, me and you going to work on what we got going on. This and the other. I feel like you always got one foot out the door. He's just like, nah, I'm straight. I'm chilling. He feels like she's nagging and she's annoying and she's going through... You know, bringing up the same old shit here and that and other. But then again, at the same time, like I say, I get it. You feel like she's annoying, but at the same fucking time, you don't make this girl feel like y'all are straight in y'all goddamn relationship. And she ain't got nothing to goddamn worry about. You the one make this girl crazy the way that she is. I don't blame Bianca for being crazy the way that she is. Because just by seeing the way you was acting when she was talking, you was just so fucking nonchalant. Like, yeah, I'm straight. I'm chilling. It is what it is. Oh, nigga, just tell me. Give me some straight up shit. That would make me mad too. Y'all, this next scene had your auntie in tears. I'm not going to lie. Y'all know I'm a cancer. I'm a big ass baby. When they had the kids come out and basically reenact what they were feeling and the words that they used out of their own mouths when they were doing this whole little drawing and little tattoo things, it was kids coming out that was basically the mini versions of them. And it was supposed to be them saying, you know, how they felt, what, basically where they was when they were kids. They had like, you know, each one of the little kids come up and it was like a mini Jocelyn come up. The Jocelyn one, Jocelyn and Stu and Aja was, who they just got to me. They just had your auntie crying. I don't want to go through it one by one because it's going to get me goddamn emotional again. But it was a full, like, out-of-body experience. Like I say, y'all, I felt like I got something out this episode. This was church for me. Like, it had me back reflecting. I could see Lil Mo, Lil Monique 
right up there and if I could have told her some stuff that I could tell her now as grown up mo like oh we y'all let me tell y'all that and let, let me afterwards after each child you know did their little you know reenactment of them they showed them like the tattoos that they had on their arms and they were able to just basically see the scars that they carry on themselves now from what they had to go through as kids y'all this episode was good for me it gave me my own little counseling and my own little reflection something that i will take with me from this doggone episode of Marriage Boot Camp. It really did. Like I said, my husband ain't watched it yet. He don't know that he finna watch it when he get off work. Um, Yes, he is. Yes, he is. But y'all, afterwards, everybody was chopping it up. They were talking. Now, the next day is gonna be the lie detector test. That's when they get to ask the one question that they've been burning up, ready to ask this whole damn time. Johnson says she wanna ask Ballistic, are you really gonna marry me? Ballistic was like, Pearl, first of all, don't tell me what the goddamn question gonna be. Second of all, don't ask me that bullshit. You can't ask me that bullshit because I'm not ready to answer no bullshit like that. So you have to ask me some goddamn mess. You don't know, I'm gonna ask you that. And you better fucking answer that shit too. Bliss, don't play with me. You better answer that shit. When I ask you that shit, you better ask, don't play with me, Bliss. Don't ask that. I'm like, Jocelyn, stop. Okay, stop. Because you getting on my goddamn nerves with that. The boy going to marry you. I mean, the man, that fine-ass man going to marry you when he decides he want to goddamn marry you. Now, calm your goddamn ass down and worry about Bonnie Bella and Stevie J rat face goddamn ass. Y'all, Bianca says she wants to ask Chosen if he's in love with somebody else. That's a good-ass question to ask him. And I think you need to be specific. Are you in love with this person? Oh, who you in love with, nigga? Say something. Um, I don't know. I think the next episode is the season finale. I don't know. If not, it's two more episodes left. Anyway, so, y'all, this episode was good. If y'all have not seen this episode, please watch it. It was good. It was therapy for me. I damn sure enjoyed it. If it was anything that I missed, y'all already know. Drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. Elbow bump. CDC elbow bump. Bam. <laughs>